Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to XCOM 2. Now XCOM 2 came out literally just a couple of hours ago and I've been playing this game quite a lot. I streamed it pretty much the entire day or at least as much free time as I had and I wanted to showcase in this game how the game runs, how it works, what the goals are and obviously the general outline on whether or not you should go ahead and purchase the game yourself. Now, I'm not going to be making that decision for you but I've been having a very good time so far so I'm going to try and showcase um, this headquarters that we got going on right here and I'm also going to be showing you some actual mission gameplay. So obviously there's going to be a little bit of spoiling on the story here and the basic outline of the story so far at the very least I'm not gonna spoil very much of it but I'm the commander of a group of like you know surviving humans and I got soldiers that I can use to command to try and get rid of the aliens basically aliens have been trying to you know take over earth and they've been very successful at doing so and we need to try and go ahead and stop them now the story is not super deep or anything it's not like the most detailed thing that is going on in the world but I want to first off show you around the headquarters that we got going on right here around the command center that we have so first off we got a research facility right here on the left side of the map and basically what you are looking at right now is all kinds of different buildings that my headquarters is all about so obviously um, we do spend a lot of time actually in the game commanding our troops but oftentimes I find myself spending a heck of a lot of time in this little area as well now like I mentioned the basic idea is that we try and get rid of all of the aliens right and oftentimes that you know is done by going on separate missions so we can fly about um, in the bridge and we can use this to basically get around the battlefield and choose one of the missions that we want to be going on next, right? And in order to do so, I need soldiers. And the soldiers that I get in this game are going to be very, very personal very quickly. So, I just got done training a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of them. And basically how it goes is that you um, grab a group of them. In this particular case, I can only be taking four at a time. And later on into the game, you will be able to take more. I believe up to like six of them. And that's just if you get more research done. Uh, you will be able to take up to six at them um, at a time. And you can basically place those around the battlefield in a turn-based fashion. Going up against uh, the aliens. Now there's obviously a lot of strategy involved. But I'll try and explain that a little bit better once we're in the game. And once we're actually you know obviously not in the game but in one of the missions now the one very important thing to note is that if one of your soldiers dies he's gone right he actually dies so the first room that we'll have a look at right here is going to be the bar slash memorial center and actually in the mission right before this one I ended up losing Halo Wenjo, and Halo Wenjo um, is named after one of my subscribers on Twitch, and I named pretty much all of these guys right here after subscribers on Twitch, and they're part of the pink wearing fedora crew. So all of my <laughs> all of my soldiers look absolutely awful. I'm fully aware of that. But losing Halo Wenjo in this particular case was pretty terrible. I mean, the guy, how many did he kill? I mean, he, had, he survived nine attacks, he dealt a heck of a lot of damage, and he ended up dying when I literally did not want him to. So, the basic premise here is that my soldiers will become stronger. The more I upgrade them, the more I customize them, the more I take them in the battle, they will rank up, they get more skills, they become more powerful. But if you accidentally lose them, which is sometimes the case, like, I definitely did not want them to, you know, to die there, they're gone permanently. So, just to showcase you a couple of the... Uh, couple of the heroes that I got so far and a couple of the soldiers that are available we can have a look at the current few soldier chaps so these are the guys that I got a bunch of these are still gravely injured and gravely wounded which is not all that great for us but that means you know just you know in simplest terms I suppose I cannot be taking them in the battle currently so they have different ranks they have different names they have different kinds of specializations but the basic idea here is that every one of those is customized so if you have a look at Ilya Roslan right here Elia Roslan is going to be my highest ranking sergeant. Uh, he is still gravely wounded, but this one is specializing not just in dealing damage to the enemies, but also in healing up other members, which is the main reason why he's got this little scouting drone. Now, just to showcase you how much you can actually customize these characters, I'll go over these menus really, really quickly. So CRX is going to be one of the heroes that I will likely be taking on the next mission. And you can see I can customize practically everything that he has to do. Now, like I said, you know, obviously I was playing this on Twitch and we went ahead and made every, every single soldier look a little bit ridiculous. But the basic idea is that I can change practically everything so right now I'm changing the color right here of his weapon he also got some face paint going on and in general he's just terrible looking right I mean it's kind of surprising that the aliens don't see him coming from afar just because he's literally you know bright as sunlight but that's not that's not all too big of a deal 
The other stuff, though, that we can be spending a lot of time on is, for example, his loadout. So, at this point, he is going to be a grenadier, and he can actually, you know, have a second weapon here that's a grenade launcher. Now, all of these different items are upgradable, and obviously, that will cost me some resources. I can, for example, go ahead and upgrade his weapon. So, the weapon name, I can customize as well if I want to. The weapon color, I can customize as well if I want to. I can also put a pattern on it, so let's give it some uh, let's give it some hearts, just because that looks brilliant. But I also can make the weapon stronger. So there's one available slot here that will increase the expanded or the magazine and the clip size that is available on this weapon. So by default, he can shoot three times before he has to spend a turn reloading. Now, if I put this uh, this upgrade on him, the extended magazine, I will be applying it to his weapon, and this way he will now have four. So that means I can actually go ahead and shoot four times before reloading. And in particular, on this hero, on this uh, on this soldier rudder, I would run out of bullets rather quickly. And as you may be noticing already, like, I have all kinds of different abilities. He can rank up, he become more powerful. In general, I want to try and preserve my strongest soldiers as much as I possibly can. Because if I lose them, they're gone permanently, and I lose something that I may be spending a heck of a lot of time on, right? So that's one of the coolest aspects in this game. I mean, you spend a lot of time trying to get the strongest set of soldiers out, but sometimes when you don't want them to, they just simply go down. And by the way, the command center that we're in right now is like something that's movable, right? So this entire ships move around when uh, when we are actually headed towards uh, towards different missions. As you can see, like, it actually has like, you know, reasonable legs underneath and it can actually take off and, you know, be taken somewhere else. Now, just to showcase you a couple more of the rooms, we got a research facility right here, where there's currently a professor working on the autopsy of a faceless monster, one of the monsters that I brought home, and obviously researching that will give me, you know, more information about what is going on with these monsters, and if Our you have a quick look at them. Progressing as expected, Commander. Well, that's great, that's great, my man. Um, but I can change up the research if I want to and go for some different stuff getting stronger weapons once again And just research more things now all of a sudden or all of these things will obviously cost me quite a significant amount of money But spending it properly, you know can help out a lot another room that we have right here in the right side is also one of the default ones And that's the engineering one so the engineering one will focus on the little robots right there, for example. And that one is basically focused around healing the enemies or getting some more vision. And in general, once again, they will also make your forces stronger. Now the 12 rooms right here in the middle of the ship are what make it a little bit more interesting. So as you may have already noticed, a whole bunch of those have like alien debris in there or they got like, you know, some sort of disgustingness going on. So this one I can go ahead and excavate if I really wanted to. I can use one of my engineers to do that. Um, and I can basically clear up those rooms and in total there's 12 of them now You know this one for example. I also still have not quite cleared up yet But these rooms are cool because you can customize them to your liking So at the moment one of the buildings or one of the only rooms actually that I got finished up right now Is going to be the guerrillas tactics school and this one will basically allow my soldiers to be a, a rank higher Right from the get-go so there's currently a bunch of nerds doing push-ups in there, you know in the beautiful colorful suits uh, that will allow them to immediately be one rank higher than the rookie rank they will be getting in here. And this will just obviously once again make your soldiers a little bit more powerful right from the get-go. Now one of the things I'm currently uh, producing is going to be the Advanced Warfare Center. And this Advanced Warfare Center will, um, you know, actually help me with my research as well. And then we also are currently clearing out one of those rooms so I can go ahead and customize this some more. And in general, the idea is, once again, to make your soldiers stronger. To make you, you know, feel a little bit more trusted with the soldiers and then to brutally have some of them get murdered and feel really bad about it. So as you may have noticed, in this command center, in this headquarters that we got going on, there's always things moving about. I mean, it's one day until the faceless autopsy is done here in the research lab. It's 10 days until these debris are cleared out. It's 21 days until the advanced warfare center is done. It's two days until one of my heroes is done with his sharpshooter training. And there's always things going on. Now, the time is really really what is really important to talk about. Basically, everything you do in a game obviously costs time. I mean, if I go from mission to mission, there will be a little bit of travel time in between, right? For example, um, you know, if I want to go to the bridge right now and check one of the missions, if I want to go ahead and make content with the western part of the United States, I will have to make sure I do so very shortly, but it will take me two days to get there. And while that goes on, the faces autopsy will be done, and obviously one of the, you know, troops will also be finishing up their training. 
Another important resource to be talking about is going to be the amount of supply that I got. So at the moment, as you can see, I have a total of 27 supply, which isn't all that much, but I have an income of 140 a month. Now, everything in this game is practically bought with supply. I mean, there's a couple of different resources as well. Don't really want to go too in-depth in that. But the basic idea is that I have to go around and collect more supply in order to upgrade my headquarters and upgrade my soldiers. Um, so at the moment, I was going ahead and going on a mission in the Western United States here, at which point, if I manage to actually complete this mission, I will actually get another plus 71 every single month, which is quite a nice amount, and, you know, obviously the more I get of that, the easier this game will become eventually. Now, there's two days of travel time headed, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sure simply pass some time. the results to be as intriguing as I do, Commander. So this right here is an example of what one of the scientists managed to discover in the previous mission that I played. I all of a sudden, well just a small little spoiler here, I all of a sudden saw one of the human civilians turn into a faceless. And that faceless did a lot of damage to my troop and I wasn't completely sure what that was all about. So hey, we managed to get this one down. Early reports from the Resistance referencing an alien creature said to be capable of shapeshifting were initially dismissed by local cell leaders who attributed the sightings to combat stress and malnutrition. It wasn't until our own forces engaged with the creature that we successfully confirmed its existence. Surprisingly enough, the description of the creature from those early reports was quite accurate. With a varying height of up to 3 meters, the specimen currently referred to as the Faceless is one of the most unusual internal structures I've ever encountered. Where one might expect to find a skeletal foundation, we instead see a series of malleable chitin-like structures providing various points for the expansion of several equally unusual fluid and membranes. Now I don't quite want to read all of this, right? But the basic idea here is that the new item is now available called the Mimic Beacon. And I could go ahead and continue onwards here, which will showcase exactly what I have just unlocked. So the Mimic Beacon generates a holographic decoy to draw enemies attack uh, for one turn. It's deployed like a grenade, thrown to the side where the decoy will appear. So I can now go ahead and create that. Now, at the same time, I can go ahead and select what I want to be researching with my scientist next. Alright, so while all of these things are going on, and while my, you know, my headquarters is upgrading and my soldiers are becoming more powerful, a new objective has shown itself while traveling to the western part of the US. The mysterious Advent Black Site must be investigated by an XCOM strike team, and any relevant artifacts must be recovered for study. So basically, we have to go ahead and figure out what is going on. Now, there's not a whole lot of information contact available. contact with the local resistance, and we can move on the Advent Black Site on your order. We should make sure our troops are fully equipped and ready for a tough mission. I'm guessing security will be tight at the facility. I've updated our latest operational objectives, Commander. Alright, so it doesn't really give me much of an indication on how difficult this mission is going to be. I think I may very well lose one or two of my soldiers on this one, and potentially all of them. Obviously the goal here is to keep everyone alive, but I can't promise. Let's launch the mission and see what we get. Alright, so it looks like we have selected the squad that we will be running around with on this mission. Let's just launch it and hope that no one dies. Our contacts in the local resistance have shown us how to access the Advent Black site. The aliens worked hard to keep this place under the radar, and we don't know what we're gonna find in there. Keep your heads up. Expect heavy opposition. Alright. So the objective for this mission is to recover any valuable information or items and also to make sure that we get all of our soldiers out by the end. So I guess we'll just have to make sure we get started as soon as possible and it's time to launch. Alright, so here we are. So the goal of this mission is to investigate the black site. That is all the way over here. Alright, so that's quite a little bit of traveling actually. Um, and obviously somewhere around these areas there's gonna be you know, a bunch of aliens hidden. And I can go ahead and place my soldiers wherever I want them to. Now, there's not gonna be a time limit or anything like that, but all of my soldiers have different commands. So, like I mentioned, some are different classes, some have different abilities, but in general, here at the bottom of the screen, you can see the different kinds of, you know, objectives that I can do with them. So, at the, vo or at the very moment, I could go ahead and fire a weapon if there's a target for it. Currently, there's not. So I can go ahead and just simply move my soldiers onwards where I want them to be. Now, as you can see, there's basically like a, uh, a green outline or like a bluish outline and a yellow outline right there as well. So all soldiers every single turn have two moves that they can make. If I go onto the yellow outline, those are my two moves done, right? If I step into the yellow zone. What I can go ahead and do is move into the blue zone here. 
and then actually um, use one of the other objectives at the bottom. So sometimes you can go ahead and move and shoot, right? You can go move forward and then shoot one of your targets. So you can get in range of them and get like a better shot. Or I can go ahead and use my overwatch here. And overwatch basically means that if there's going to be an enemy that moves close to this hero right now and she can't or she can see one of them she will go ahead and shoot at that at the very first moment she gets and the basic idea is that i will be moving around my targets or my my you know my soldiers here and move towards the objective slowly but surely and the one thing i've noticed so far is that you do definitely want to play it slowly you don't want to be rushing this if you rush this you're gonna be in a lot of trouble uh, so i'm gonna be taking it real slow I'm gonna be taking it real slow. There's no need for me to rush this one out at all. So I'm gonna be trying to tactically move my uh, my guys forward and get closer and closer towards the objective. Now, early on in the game, like early on in every single um, you know match that I've played so far, at the very least, I've been concealed at the beginning. So that means that the aliens are currently not aware of the fact that we are advancing, you know, onwards in their in their you know basically in their terrain. Uh, so for the moment, I am you know. Concealed and that means that all of my soldiers can a little bit easier get into position like they have no reason to suspect us right now Until I start shooting or until I break a window or until I you know make any kind of significant noise or very clearly walk in their vision You know, I am gonna be concealed and I can make it so that my units uh, are gonna get at least a little bit closer together So I find it to be very useful at least so far to not split them up all too much I'm sure there's gonna be you know a moment where you might want to go ahead and split up your forces instead of like you know Having them all move in one target, but I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to be smart here and just okay. inch my way forward rather than uh, rather than rushing it. Now I could go ahead most likely and you know move onwards here as well. Without the all right. introduction of human DNA, these creatures once operating under the guise of thin men now show their true Ooh. form, a purely reptilian species. No reason for them to hide. The aliens don't need an infiltration unit anymore. Alright, so that right there was actually one of the new enemies. I've never seen those before. Those were like snake-like things. So after this mission, if I manage to successfully do it, um, I will likely be able to also get, um, you know, a little bit of extra uh, information about those and get some autopsy done on those. Um, I do have to go ahead here that I don't get too close to this car. That might actually trigger some detection. Headed there now. So that's a little interesting. I'm not sure what their attack is going to be like either. So far, I've noticed that most of the enemies have different kinds of attacks, uh, depending on what exactly is going on. We'll be moving forward a little bit faster here. Uh, I can also get up to the high ground, actually. That might be useful. Although, ideally, I'd be moving, you know, to a place that I can't really see it very easily. Um, obviously, since you also have sharpshooters in the game, I think a sniper over there could be, you know, could be extremely potent. I'm not sure if anyone is inside of this area. There is going to be something over here, actually. Like, we can't force this door open. We can hack it open if we want to, but... I think for the moment, we're just going to, you know, keep our soldiers a little closer together. And uh, keep this uh, keep this dude in Overwatch. Alright. So they still are not aware of our presence here. That's fine. I'll be moving onwards over here. Now, you may think this is going really slowly, right? Now, you may think, like, this is, you know, extremely slow. And you're right, like, it's definitely not the fastest paced game. But I've noticed spending some good time, at least early on, on positioning your forces all together is, like, 100% worth it. If you rush this... You, you're just, you know, you're just gonna be in so much trouble. Like, you can easily, easily lose control of all of your units. Now, putting your soldiers too closely together, by the way, is also a risk. Because if you do so, you you risk up, um, you know, you risk basically getting everyone caught with their pants down. Which is, as you may have guessed, not that great. And you can, you know, get splash damage to you. Alright. So this is as fast as I dare to play at the moment. Heading to that location. All right, can we go through the train? Let me see. Yeah, we can move through the train, as you can see. So I think we're going to move all these guys um, through this area, at least in just a second. Hope there's no one in it. <laughs> all right, good. Okay. So there is one of the cannons up on the high ground there. There is going to be a fission radius on those. So if I get too close to those cannons, you will be able to see it on the ground. And actually, ooh, 
There's one of the snake-like things over there. Oh, snap. Alright, yeah, I think we need to start triggering combat, combat soon. Um, but yeah, the basic idea is if I, uh, if I get too close to it, which you can see by these red marks, I will be spotted. So, ideally I'd set up some sort of ambush to try and get damage done to these guys as quickly as possible. Those are all sites where they get vision from, though. So I'm trying to look here if there's a way inside for me where I do not get spotted from the tower, but I think there is none. So I think I may have to actually walk this way instead and like go over the central bit. Um, all of the inside is also practically covered though. So this is kind of scary. I could also try and get myself blown by, by the cannon, but... I mean, that cannon is not easily shot. So ideally, yeah, ideally I either bypass it completely, which is a fair enough option. I actually think I might want to try that instead. Just like move it very slowly. All right, all right, we'll give that a try. We'll give that a try. I wanna, I wanna go with Pink Fedora Man first. Solo Darkness. You can sit right here. Now, do I want to put him on Overwatch? I can actually use my grenade launcher. As you can see, this frag grenade will do a ton of damage to them. So this is one of the Grenadiers' perks. Hold on, let me get the other guys in, 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 you know, in position first. I don't know if they're gonna move. They may very well be moving back, at which point I lose the potential of doing triple amounts of splash damage. So I put this guy behind the corner instead. I put him on overwatch there. That means that um, one of my soldiers is gonna be exposed. But the others are gonna be just fine. Alright, I'll put you over here. So I keep them spread out at least a little. This way the healer, like she's the healer of the bunch here. Ooh, snap. Did I trigger something bad? Not yet. Um, she at least is like is still in range of the targets. And is there a way for me to get up to this building? No, I sadly cannot quite get to that high ground, so I'll be getting behind this. Now, if you're used to something like StarCraft, which I play a heck of a lot, obviously, you know, the speed of this game is much slower, but here we go. So we are in a good position here. I'm feeling like this is a good shot to take. This may actually blow my co- well, this will blow my co- for sure, but this may not be a smart decision. But here we go. Gonna be sending over the Grenadier here and shoot a rocket straight at these enemies. And as you can see, that does a heck of a lot of splash damage. That was a huge attack. Now, I have been spotted, for sure. So that means that, you know, we'll have to start watching out. I have no idea what she does. Okay, so this one was on Overwatch, which means it immediately is gonna start shooting. And actually, the snake-like character is done. That's huge. Oh, he actually earned his promotion from that move. I'm not sure how fast or how far these things can shoot. Alright. Luckily not too far, it looks like. Ooh, okay. So that enemy right there actually tried stabbing my, uh, my hero. As you will see very shortly, there's always a chance that it's missing. Alright, he did get stunned there. That's unfortunate. I wonder if I have a grenade on any of my other minions and I can just go ahead and kill both of them. Can he hit me? Oh snap, he can. <gasps> Did he die? No, 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 I think he still has one health, right? Oh no! My main soldier just got killed. And just like that, Solar Darkness, that I spent quite a bunch of money on, just left the battlefield. So, that is real unfortunate actually, I still am not quite done with this mission yet. I'm not completely sure how far these things can shoot. It seems to be much further than I anticipated. In the previous missions, I've nuked them down first. That's real unfortunate. Now, if I want to go ahead and shoot, which I can do, you can see there's a 69% chance of me hitting it. And it's the same thing for all of these soldiers. So I can go ahead and shoot the, you know, the, the, um, the, um, the, the hero that way. Now, one of the other things I can go ahead and do is just simply throw a grenade. Grenades have no way at, uh, at missing. I want to see, though, if I can shoot down... The, uh, the thing right there. Sadly, it's not gonna happen from here. What I can use, maybe... Does he have a grenade? Yeah, he also has a grenade. So what I can maybe do... Is have, have him move... Or have him move a little bit more to a safer position. Throw the grenade from there. And then have... Sashi right here. 
you know, into safety. So I'm gonna move her forward. That's affirmative. Have her throw the grenade. We should take rid or get rid of both of these guys. Alright, that's very good. Gotta be careful though, because cars can explode. Then move over with... A CRX here and use the rocket launcher that he has to try and get rid of the thing on the high ground. Now I'm secretly hoping that I can hit him. Oh man, that's just barely not in range. You see those little squares light up? No oh, man, we can't ignore it, but I don't know how far the shooting range on it is. It may be able to still shoot us just fine, even from here. That's real unfortunate. I was actually secretly hoping that I would be able to reach that. Hmm. Alright, I guess we'll we'll hide behind the building then. Is that an okay thing to do? We can just move onwards, I suppose. Yeah, I don't want to sit too close to the car. Hmm. I guess we'll sit right here. That is gonna be, I think, still in range though. Okay. Of the uh, of the cannon. I secretly hope that that is not the case, but. Alright, she does have a chance of shooting it. As you can see, there is um, a chance of me doing 5 damage at the very maximum. And on this target, there is a 69% hit uh, chance. And also, there's 2 armor on it. So, I'm gonna be able to keep it at 1 HP at the most. Maybe I should have just considered like attacking with both of the enemies. But, I'm gonna go ahead and just simply hide with her. Location confirmed. I think we can go ahead and kill it in the next turn. I hope it's just simply gonna be out of range though at this point. Oh man, it sucks though that we lost our very first soldier that way. Alright, tower, are you gonna shoot? Oh my god, what are those? This is an extremely well equipped mechanized combat unit. We'll need to look for vulnerabilities if we're going to take that thing out. Oh my god, that's not good. That's not good at all. Alright, so CRX does have vision of those minions here. I want to see if I can go ahead and maybe... Well, I can hit one of them. I can move forward here as well. And try and hit all three. If I move forward here, I can maybe get some good splash damage off of the Grenadier once again. Gotta be careful for the tower though, because they didn't shoot in the previous one. Wait, where's the third one? Did I, did I lose track of the third one? I don't know exactly where it was. I think it was right here to the left a little. Alright. They should do it, right? And as far as I'm aware, grenades don't really have a chance at missing. Alright. So that was two shots in one kill there. Very good. Gotta keep in mind though. The turret is still up on the high grounds or on the, in the skies there. So I'm gonna move onwards here, and hope that she gets in range here. Can she shoot? Oh no, she sadly cannot quite shoot from here. And there may be a way to actually see whether or not she can shoot right from the get-go, but... I'll move past this little spot here. <gasps> Whoa, they're, to they're standing on top of the roof there? Oh god. Alright. So she has a good spot from here to shoot. But ideally, I don't want him too far from the from the rest of the guys here, right? So if I move over here, I should still be in okay spot to hit at least one of them. Confirmed. You cannot shoot and then walk, by the way. Alright. Let's try and see if you can make it. Oh no, she missed. That's not good. That's not good. Alright, so now it's their turn again. Alright, so she is gonna go ahead. That was about a 20% chance. <gasps> that's what she does! She's bound? Oh, that's bad. And she's unconscious right now? Oh, God. Um. And now he is going to be panicked. Oh, God, no way. Where are you going? You're going the wrong way, my man. Oh god, I chose the worst mission to showcase. I use- I lose an entire turn here as well, because she's still bound. 
My other hero is panicked and the other one is unconscious. Oh god. That's another hero killed. That is another hero killed right there. Oh god, no way. I didn't wanna mean I didn't mean to like lose my entire squad here. No, I worked a lot on these guys. Like I spent a lot of time trying to get these guys. Oh my god, that's bad. I can barely walk anywhere. He wasted an entire turn. I mean... How much damage does my weapon do? 4 to 6. So I have a chance at immediately killing this thing if I hit 6. And obviously hit him to begin with. I need to, I need to get to watch the saver spot though. This is a risk. If I do not kill this guy, I think I lose my entire squad. I think everything is gone. I think my entire squad is gone if I don't hit 6 here. I got so lucky. Well, that's not game over yet though. That's not like quite everything over yet. We need a couple of misses here. Oh god. No way. Don't hit me. Don't like snare someone else close to us. She's gonna do it, isn't she? Oh, she missed! Incoming over here. I'm not quite out of the water yet, though. There's this other guy coming in from the other end. Can't quite see him anymore. Looks like he's left us alone. Alright. Alright, so the issue that we were having just a second ago seems to be gone. Oh, man. That's affirmative. I have to shoot that thing down. It's a 50% chance of me hitting it. I'm gonna need at least two shots here anyway. Alright. Hope that this one hits. Alright, it did hit. That's good. That's a 50% chance. My other soldier is still unconscious though. Is she dead? I hope she's not dead. Do not grab me. If you grab me, I'm also done for. Oh god, she's gonna try, isn't she? <gasps> no! I lost all of my mi- oh no, I lost all my soldiers. I have no idea what even happens now. Well, I know that this is also part of XCOM 1. I learned that in the hard, you know, in the hard way as well, in the most difficult way. I thought I had a good setup there though. We had a great beginning at the very least, but then things just went south very quickly, didn't they? Oh god, that's bad. That is not good whatsoever, and sadly, we did not manage to either continue the story there, and we also ended up losing literally all of my soldiers. Well, what a terrible example on how to play this game, I suppose, but hey. Oh, man. Alright, and that is us back right here in the command center. I've got barely any money, I've got barely any soldiers, and I have very little left to do. If we now head to the memorial... My fallen soldiers list... has grown substantially. Oh god, this is bad. This is bad. But either way, I hope this at the very least gave you a bit of an introduction on what XCOM 2 is all about and how painful this can be. I mean, I've grown a little attached to these guys, man. I spent a lot of hours this afternoon trying to rank up a couple of these dudes and I just lost practically everyone. That's not good. I guess we'll have to find another way to continue onwards. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't already, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you in the next XCOM 2 video.